In El Paso, Texas, today the investigation continued into yesterday's mass shooting. As we think about those 11 people that were killed there in Pittsburgh in the synagogue. A little church, a quiet street, a small Texas town suddenly thrust into the glare of the national spotlight. It's heartbreaking. That church is my family. After a gunman opened fire, killing 26 people during their Sunday ritual in a house of worship. 20 people were killed and at least 26 were wounded. Tim David Atkinson, author of a manifesto urging violent war against liberals, opens fire inside a Knoxville, Tennessee Unitarian church during the youth performance of a musical, killing two and wounding seven. That includes the murders of 11 people at a Pittsburgh synagogue last fall. Danny Roy Baker, Miramar Beach, Florida, who is a former GOP volunteer angry about immigration, opens fire on a room full of Tulane exchange students, killing two and injuring three. A deadly encounter at a white nationalist rally in Charlottesville, Virginia in 2017. The murders of nine people at a church in Charleston in 2015 and the deaths of six people at a Sikh temple in Wisconsin in 2012. Keith Luke of Brockton, Massachusetts, who is a neo-Nazi, kills two and injures another in a rape and murder spree targeting non-white people. He is halted before reaching a synagogue and later convicted of murder. What we know about the killers in several recent mass shootings in America is that many share a white supremacist ideology. Well, these attacks have put the spotlight on right-wing extremism. This country has seen a rise in violence by white supremacists. White supremacist and other forms of right-wing violence are currently the deadliest active domestic extremist movements in the U.S. I don't want to, you know, lay in the fear of, of these groups, but they are on the rise. Racism, white supremacy has existed almost as long as this entire country has. So what's different about it now? Uh, one of the things that we try to study when we look at these groups is the way in which they communicate both internally and then to the public. And obviously, with internet technologies, there's been uh, a lot more opportunity for white supremacists to directly reach the public with their messaging. It has to do with a lot of the fear, fear of losing what is yours. So, I mean, when you have these groups, these groups are all formed of mostly males who are fearful and, and feel inadequate in some way and feel they've not been heard and, and now they're being heard. So they are on the rise. Uh, you know, when you have certain politics and, and political people that will support them and, and or at least give them little pats on their heads and tell them they did good and it, it, it helps grow. But also we have to start to take into consideration how the platforms and social media are circulating the messages of these white supremacists.